Oh, and now we hand over from Colonel Failure to me, Skystorm, and I am joined as ever by my faithful assistant, Picture Perfect. How you doing, Picture? Hey guys, I'm doing very well, thank you. How are you doing? I, I am so excited. It's Transport <laughs> Fever 2 launch day. Yes, it's finally here. And I, I'm amazed how many people are actually watching us right now because I thought they'd all be downloading the game and playing. I thought, I, I thought there'd be like two people here. With like <laughs> me, basically me and the Colonel. And everybody else would be playing the game. Um, wow. Transport Fever 2 has taken um, Transport Fever to new heights. Uh, they've added so much to the game, but they've kept all the good stuff. And hopefully, during uh, during my little segment, then uh, I'll be showing you a load of the new stuff. So, we're going to just jump straight in, because looking at this screen is kind of boring. So, we're going to play a free game. And I was, I was trying to decide which map I was going to go for, and I was, I've been looking at different maps, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to go with a tropical map, like I've got on my main, on my, my main video series on YouTube. Um, because it looks just awesome and uh, and I want to show you as uh, as much today as, as we can and since uh, since the Colonel's gone with the dry arid shrubland uh, of uh, of the Midwest I thought we'd go with them um, I thought we'd go for the for the tropical a bit of Florida action going on so I'm gonna go with a map using a seed of sky map but this uh, this map's going to be different from my uh, from my video series because um, I'm going to have mainland cranked up to the middle and I'm not going to have any islands so we've just got one big main island in the middle of the map which I kind of like because it I, I like staying away from the edges because when you get to the edges it kind of breaks the immersion and I think this looks gorgeous so that's what we're going to go with a very large map, of course, because why wouldn't we? One-to-one, uh, <laughs> -one because um, mainly because the Colonel doesn't like one-to-one -one maps, so I thought I'd do that. <laughs> We're going with a high number of towns because we want to connect loads of stuff together. Medium level of industry, which should give us uh, plenty to satisfy our, uh, our towns. Although, I tell you one thing, you need more industry in Transport Fever 2 than you needed in Transport Fever 1. So this may look like a lot of industries, but industries produce less in Transport Fever 2 than they did in Transport Fever 1. So you need to hook up more of them, which is awesome. I love that. Let's uh, jump onto the next bit. The next bit. We're gonna start the game in the year 1930. Why? Because it's awesome, 1930. It, it opens up all... You know what? I might actually crank it down to 1920 and give us a, a little bit of a lead-in because all kinds of cool stuff happens so, sort of between 1920 and 1940. You get all the best trains and everything. It's it's just staggering. Um, we're going to go with uh, medium difficulty. I am going to go with some custom settings. Now, the the, the Colonel was playing on uh, on completely vanilla settings. I'm going to I'm going to put uh, sandbox mode on. Now, sandbox mode, you still have all the same costs, all the finances are exact exactly the same. If you do want to play pure sandbox, then you turn on no costs and sandbox. And uh, you've also got the vehicle no end. Those are the three standard mods you get with the vanilla game. But there are already so many mods appearing on the Steam Workshop. You you oh man. There's there's already over 80 mods on the Steam Workshop, and we and and we've only been live for like two hours, so <laughs> give it a couple of weeks. There's going to be thousands on there. It's crazy, and some of the mods are awesome. I loaded up one just to remind me to tell you about it, and that is there is a night mode mod, and I know a lot of you guys um, have kind of requested night mode. So, uh, so yeah, do you want to see what your trains look like running in the dark? Load up this mod, enable it, and off you go. Right, we are going to have some custom settings. Now, the climate and the environment will keep us tropical. The town names, I'm going to go for American, because they tend to have the coolest names. And vehicles, this is what, see, this is where the Colonel made a mistake in his segment. 
He only had the Asian vehicles. I'm going all. That means I can have everything. I can have, I can have big boys. I can have the flying Scotsman. I can have the Mallard. I can have everything you can imagine. <laughs> And uh, and planes, we can have all the planes. We can have DC threes and you name it, everything. So that's um, that's what we're going with. That's the setup. Am I happy with the map? Yeah, I'm happy with the map. I'm happy with the year. Happy with the difficulty. Let's do it. Now this is a very large map, so it does take about a minute or so to uh, to prepare the game and 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 build everything and map it all out. Uh, so, um, so during that minute, we can we can fill in the time by um, asking picture perfect. Like so, so you all excited for today? <laughs> I am. I've been really looking forward to it all morning. You've been a bit nervous. Just just a little bit because it's um it's quite a few people, isn't it? <laughs> there are one or two people. How many people have we got here at the moment? I can't actually see on my screen. At one thousand nine hundred and eighty-five. Good lord! I one, know <laughs> one thousand nine hundred people with nothing better to do than than, <laughs> than listen to me and you. <laughs> no, it's one thousand nine hundred people who are desperate to see more of Transport Fever Two, and I tell you what, I don't blame them because man, there's come some cool stuff in this. And I'm going to be showing you as much as I can. I'm going to be showing you as many of the vehicles as I can, as much of the building. I'm going to show you the modular buildings. The modular buildings are awesome. They just add a whole new dimension to the game. I'm going to be showing you the uh, the terrain, uh, the terrain uh, features. Here they are. Uh, the paint, I'm going to show you the paint tools. I'm going to show you how to, how to decorate your map. You can make these maps look just unbelievably beautiful. Uh, and they're beautiful to start off with. In Transport Fever 1, you had to do quite a lot of work to make the game look, like make the map look really beautiful. In this, in Transport Fever 2, the map looks beautiful right from the get-go. Let's turn off all of the, uh, all of the icons just apart from the town names. And we'll have a little look at this place, right? And you get down to this kind of level. And look, I mean, it's beautiful right from the get go. Just awesome. And all of the features that they've added, like the animals. And you know what, if I, if I just repay my loan for a second, then I can run the game and I won't be incurring costs. One of the changes to the game is that uh, your, your loan interest is now taken on a monthly basis. So no cheating with the loans anymore. Oh no, gotta play it straight now. So let's, uh, let's just crank it up. And you'll see all the animated animals in the fields. It's awesome, awesome. Where's some sheep? Where's some, we've got to find some sheep. <laughs> Where's some sheep? We got we got cows around here. Any, any sheep out in the fields or anything? No, we got cows out here again. Where's sheep? Let's just go and have another look at them. Another look at them. Another farm. We got horses. Oh, here's some sheep out in the fields, and as well as um, as well as the wildlife on the well, as well as the domesticated animals on the farms we've also got loads of wildlife like over here for example we've got a flock of birds flying along and they've just done a lot to kind of bring the maps to life the terrain is just gorgeous absolutely love it and not only is there wildlife out in the uh, out in the woods there's there's bears and deer and foxes and all kinds of things running around the place. There's also fish. There, there's some fish right there. There you go, some fish swimming around. Got a look. Look at the tropical beaches. It's a beautiful setting for what is, let's face it, the best virtual train set you could ever want, <laughs> right? Now, you can, one of the great things about Transport Fever 
uh, and of course Transport Fever 2, is that you can play it in so many ways. If you want to play it as a tycoon game and see like how much money can you make and like, then you can play it like that. If, uh, if you want a real challenge, then I tell you what, uh, some people say the game's too easy. Um, it, well, if you play on relatively easy settings, then yeah, it's relatively easy. Um, if you uh, if you crank up the difficulty level, though, man, it becomes almost impossible. If you play on hard difficulty, on like a really hilly map, good luck to you. Seriously, you try and make money under those circumstances, you're gonna struggle. Um, what else? What else can can I uh, talk to you about? I don't know. There's there's so much. I suppose we should kind of get on and uh, and put some transport in so we can actually see some uh, some vehicles running around and stuff. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's get some stuff running. I'm going to start off. I think with um, am I going to start off with a with a cargo line or am I going to start off with some passengers? You know what? Why don't I ask you guys? What would you guys like to see? Would you would you prefer me to do some cargo shipping? Uh, I don't know. Probably do a, an oil line or something like that. Or would you prefer me to focus on passengers at the start? If you've got if you've got a vote, vote now. Passengers or cargo? What do you think of the, the, the map? It's pretty gorgeous, isn't it, picture? It is kind of beautiful, isn't it? Like the islands and the beaches and everything. Uh, it really, really is. Oh, well, I think so. I think so. <laughs> Here we go. Now we're getting some... Oh! Bird Dog wants passengers. Sip Staff wants cargo, and um, and Traumatic Nutter wants pictures big hands. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we've got some of our people. But don't be frightened. Don't be frightened, guys. We, we're keeping her big monster hands well <laughs> under control today. There, there won't be any trouble. There won't be any scaly, big clawed monster oh, hands no. anywhere. No, we're, no we're, keeping, we're keeping all of that under control. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, let's see. We've got um, we've got we've got a bit of a mix. A few people, a few people want cargo. A few people want passengers. Yeah. Silent Lord wants filthy passengers. <laughs> <laughs> we can, I don't know. We could probably arrange that. You'll notice that there are various tips flashing up. I thought I'd leave those on so that you guys can read them and see uh, see kind of what's what. The, the help that the game gives you as you as you jump in. So yeah, I was saying about the different ways you can play the game. You can play the game as a as as a as a tycoon game, but you can also play the game just as a virtual train set, which is which is pretty much the way I like to to, to play the game. I do always play with the costs on, and I always do make a profit and whatever, but. For me, it's about building a transport network in a beautiful environment. So I do lots of uh, lots of detailing and lots of lots of terrain manipulation and stuff like that. I love stuff to look really, really good. And man, the features the features that they've given us in in uh, Transport Fever Two are amazing. You can do incredible things, and I'll be showing you that in a little bit. But let's um, let's get started. So a question I'm often asked. How do you make money at the beginning of the game, right? Well, the key, the key to profitable transport lines is, is trying to run as full as possible in both directions, right? Now that's not always as easy as, uh, as it may seem. So we're gonna, we're gonna look around and we're gonna try and find, uh, let's do a cargo route to kick off. We'll try and find a nice profitable cargo route so let's uh, let's turn on industries. So, what could we possibly do to get? And what you want is like one main line, one main cargo line that's shipping um, full in both directions. And if you can get that, then you'll make a ton of cash and you'll be fine. Now, I always think the easiest way to do that is with oil. Okay, but Oil has changed a lot from uh, Transport Fever 1. Uh, in Transport Fever 1, you used to have um, an oil wells, and then you used to have fuel refineries. Now, I can't see a fuel refinery anywhere. Where's a fuel refinery? There isn't a fuel refinery anywhere around here. 
Uh, where on earth is there a fuel refinery? Uh, those are farms. There's, come on, there's gotta be a fuel refinery somewhere on the map. Uh, you know what, I'm not seeing any anywhere. But if you wanna find one, right? If you look around the map and it's like, well, I can't see any fuel refineries. Oh, there's one over there actually. But if you go into, uh, for example, this is the oil refinery because it's now a two-step process. It used to be that you would just ship your oil to a fuel refinery and boom, you got fuel, right? And it was uh, it was a one-to-one -one ratio. So you could just put a line straight in between an oil well and a, and a fuel refinery and boom, run full in both directions. Well, they got wise to that. So now it's a bit more difficult. You have to ship your oil, your, your crude oil, that's produced by uh, the oil wells. You have to ship that to an oil refinery and turn it on a two to one ratio. So two crude oil, crude oil turns into one refined oil. And then you have to ship your oil to a fuel refinery. And then uh, that gets turned into the fuel and then you can ship your fuel out. Now, as far as distributing the fuel, like if we were to, if we were to use these two oil wells, ship the oil to our oil refinery and then ship it over to this fuel refinery uh, and then obviously ship it back so that we're running oil one way, fuel the other so that we stay full. Um, how would we be then for distributing it? We could distribute it out to Amarillo, we could distribute it out to St. Louis, uh, anywhere else around here that wants fuel? I mean, Lincoln potentially. Yeah, we could do that. So let's um, let's get that set up first of all. This this will give us a, a nice bit of profit to get going. So what do we want to do? Our main uh, our main train line is going to run from this oil refinery over to there. So let's do it. Let's get some trains. Let's get some buildings. Let's get a cargo. Now I guess we're gonna be running a terminus um, at this end. And we only need one platform. So we just flip this around. Now we need to hook this up in some way to this road. And this has changed as well. Now you'll see that you get, you get little blue connectors that will hook up to a road. You can't really see it. Particularly well, I'm trying to zoom in so you can see. I'm actually not getting them. Let me, if I, if I, if I turn it around that way and hook it up, you'll see. See those blue connectors? Yes, you can see those blue connectors very clearly now. So what I'm going to do is put in a little road because I want I want it facing that way. So I'm going to put in a little road uh, across the back like that, and you can see that when I when I drew that. You get those. Um, you get those connectors. No, I'm not getting it there. I won't get it there either. Uh, but you can see those blue connectors connected from the road to the uh, to the oil refinery. Right. Let's grab. Uh, let's grab that station again. Flip it around. I think. I think we'll give ourselves maybe a little bit of room and pop it out here, maybe somewhere like that. In it goes, 200,000. We've just spent our first 200,000. Hooray, and there was much rejoicing. Let's head over to the oil, the, sorry, to the fuel refinery. Okay, so we want this heading out in that direction. Now, I'm gonna stay as far away from the town as I can because there is a new concept in, in Transport Fever 2, which is called emissions. Let's talk for a second about how towns grow, because this works completely different to Transport one, uh, Fever 1. In Transport Fever 1, um, towns grew basically infinitely. Doesn't happen like that now. You have a starting size for your town. So St. Louis's starting size, its initial size, is 150 residents. Okay, And then depending on various factors, that goes up. Right, but this is this is how much it goes up in total. It's not like an annual growth, right? So if you're supplying all the fuel needs, for example, for St. Louis, then you would get 
plus 100% growth. And if you were supplying all of the, uh, the, the tools needs as well, then you would get plus 200% growth. 100% for the fuel, 100% for the tools. There you go. And then um, also for the, for the destinations that people can access. And destinations are industrial buildings or commercial buildings. So if we look at a town and we look at the, uh, the residential, commercial and industrial. So the green is the residential buildings. Each one, oh, hello, three new vehicles are available. Now you can see how quickly time rolls on. So we're gonna do, we're gonna, I'm gonna pause the game for now, but I'll show you that you can check, and this is one of my favorite features. You can change how fast time runs, okay? So you can change the date speed. Now, the date speed is completely separate from the game speed, right? And the date speed only affects the, the dates which things become available, like um, the date that trains or planes or ships or, or, or things like roundabouts become available in the game. Um, if I pause the date speed completely, which I'm going to do for a little while, uh, everything else still, still runs the same. Your finances are still the same. You'll still get charged uh, interest every month, right? But it's just the date isn't moving. The, the time still moves exactly the same in months and years, but the date doesn't change. See, some, some people have been watching my series and they've been going, oh, well, if, if, you're not, if the date's not moving, then you're just making free money. No, 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 it doesn't work like that. All the finances are the same, it's just that the date isn't changing. So, that's that. Right, let's get back to this. So, we've got uh, residential, industrial, and commercial. Every one of these commercial buildings or industrial buildings is a potential destination. Okay, so for the people of St. Louis, they have um, 374 destinations that they can access currently by private transport. Zero by public transport because we haven't put any in yet. Okay, and the more destinations they can get to, the bigger the growth bonus. So those are the, uh, those are the pluses to your growth, but there are also minuses. And the minuses are the, the condition of your stations and bus stops and all like all, all your transport infrastructure the, uh, the the condition of traffic so if you're if your city's full of traffic jams then uh, then this will go down and you'll get a minus over here and the other one and this is something that I didn't think I was gonna like in the game I was like oh what's what's this emissions and emissions is awesome and a lot of people think emissions is just like pollution like traffic fumes and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Emissions covers everything, right? So some people have said, but, but there wouldn't be emissions in like 1850, right? I, okay, I tell you what, if you, if you were living in 1850 London, right, the the noise from the the horse carts, <laughs> from the milkman, the, the, the postman the the coalman delivering coal to the houses and all this kind of stuff if you're on if you're on a main route with loads of that god the noise <laughs> seriously if you've never like i i live in an area where like we've got a ray riding stables uh, very close by and they're always riding up and down and the noise of the horses hooves on the roads and the the clanking of like they they also have a wagon that they, they roll up and down uh, the noise and whatever. Seriously, you wouldn't want to live like near there. <laughs> it would put you off a bit. So, uh, so yeah. So all the emission stuff, I love. I love the whole growth mechanic. Now it's very predictable and it's very transparent, which we like. We like transparency in games. So let's get this other station put in. So, what do we want here? I want to be pointing. Where am I pointing? You know what? I should Hi. put. Yeah. Um, a couple of people said the mouse is slightly off center. If we could maybe try and fix it. Um, no, we can't. Okay. So, sorry. <laughs> no, if if the mouse is off center, then like unlucky. It is what it is. I'm not I'm not messing around with it now. Um, it's not a big deal. Get over it. 
So what was I doing? Oh yeah, I was putting this. I was going to put my station uh, icons on, so that we can see uh, we can see where the other station is. I've already put in. So my other station is over there, it's hidden behind some industry icons. There it is. So we want to be pointing in this direction. So I'm going to put in. Uh, I was thinking of putting a you know, putting in a road going around here, which I think I'm going to do actually. Let's um, let's take out these roads and have something a little bit nicer. So we'll grab, um, I think I want to do this with one of these country roads, uh, but I want it to go in straight. So if I do it from this end, that will work. And you can see all these blue connections to, to the well, uh, to the fuel refinery, not oil well. There we go, so that's in. And then we'll grab a station, flip it around. Now I suppose I should show you how you can uh, how can you, how you can modularize these stations because it's kind of awesome. Um, we're gonna have to go, I think, round that way. Yeah, we're gonna have to go around that way. So what I should do is just extend this around the. Oh, come on, come, come around the corner. Oh, it's it's gonna give me collisions. You know what? Extend it straight out and put in it just a, a regular corner. Oh, now, oh well, am I not going to get connections on this? Oh, yes, I am going to get connections on that side. I just wasn't close enough. There we go. Awesome. Take out that little bit. Cool. We'll uh, take out that. Now, we when, when I disconnect that road, sometimes you will get warnings. Uh, in this in this case, we're getting a warm warning because the town authorities are complaining that we've interrupted a street connection between St. Louis and Wilmington. Where's Wilmington? There's Wilmington, over there. Um, so we'll have to reconnect that, which I will do after I've got this station in. So we're heading, where's, where is it again? Oh, it's, there's the oil refinery, there's the station. Get my station, flip you around. And we want it going probably something like that. There we go. Cool. Awesome. So all we need to do now is hook those uh, hook those up with some tracks. And fortunately, this bit is pretty darn flat. So I'm not gonna have to worry about the terrain. We'll throw in a nice big curve to take us wide of the of the city, and let's see. We want to go. We want to go into there. So yeah, we don't need to go quite that wide. Let's go something like. I just want to clear this industry here. So something like that should be fine. And then I'll probably just run it straight into here. Okay, that's going to cost me something like two hundred thousand to build. It's raised up a little bit here, which is going to cost me some money. But having said that, it is nice and flat. So I think what we'll do is we'll borrow some money. Now currently we we have a loan of five hundred thousand. We can crank that loan up. But of course we have to pay interest on whatever we borrow. So let's borrow 10 million. We can go up to either, I'm not sure whether it's 20 or 30 in, uh, in 1921, but we can go up to about 20 or 30 million, something like that. Right, what do I want? I want tracks again. Let's throw in a track like this, boom. Now we're gonna want more than one train running backwards and forwards on here. So we're gonna to have to double track this. So we're gonna get a second track. Now I wanna leave a gap in between this signal here and the platform so that I can run a road through here. And that gives me enough space, that's fine. And we've got the track speeds shown to us so that we can we can make sure that the trains can keep a decent speed when they're coming in and out. There we go. 
and then I'll run this out here. There's another 80,000. And run this up here. Now I want to do the same thing at the other end. So we'll stop this a bit short and then we'll come up here. I'm going to leave a bit of a gap just in case I want to put a road through there and run you out like that. Hooray. Okay. So that, that is our track. Nice and simple. Transport Fever 2 makes it very, very easy to lay tracks, but lay tracks in a very realistic kind of way. Now, you've got a choice of whether you want to have uh, electric trains. If you want electric trains, then you have to have catenaries on there, but you don't have to have catenaries. And personally, I'm not a big fan of catenaries. They kind of spoil the view when you're riding the trains. If you've got these posts every so often, and, uh, and you've got the, the overhead wires and everything, and it all gets a bit messy. So I'm gonna take those out. And the way you take those out, we go to uh, tracks, we go to this track modification tool, and you can see that currently everything's blue, which means it's all electrified. Well, we can unelectrify it just by clicking on the tracks and changing them from blue to red and then they're unelectrified. Now I could have left them in, which would have uh, saved me some money, or I could have just turned it off before I put the tracks in. <laughs> but I wanted to show you how, to, how you do it. So there you go. So that's how you do that. Right, the next essential part of um, setting up your, your virtual train set is signaling. So let's do some signals. Let's have a signal going in here. Now, why am I putting a signal there? Well, it's because when you've got a train coming in this direction, and one of the things in Transport Fever 2 that they've added is these arrows on the signal so that you can actually see what you're, like, see what you're doing much more clearly. What this is saying is before, before entering this next seg section of track, make sure that it's clear ahead, right? So if we've got one train that's say in the station, a train coming up here is gonna stop at this signal and wait for this next section of track to be clear before it pulls in. Awesome source, it's exactly what we want. Let's go to the other end of the line, do exactly the same thing up here. Throw in a signal, boom. And then we wanna divide the track up into sections so that our track, our trains can can operate in, in blocks along the track. So what well, what I like to do is just let me turn the let me turn the signals on so you can see them. There's the signals. So there's the two we've put in. I like to put one in like in the center. And we've got a road there which is so I'll, I'll go with a bit of uh, go with a bit of realism and we'll put a a, a signal there. So let's say let's say somebody broke down their hand cart broke down on the on the tracks then uh, then the train could be told to stop before it plows into them and kills everybody that'd be good wouldn't it and generally we'll, a good idea yeah i think so generally <laughs> not killing people regarded as I, I think generally regarded as a good thing and then what like on a on a track of this length divide it in the middle and then divide it again so we'll have one there one there and here split that in half so we've decided we've divided it into kind of four pieces obviously two tracks which means we've got like eight segments plus the stations so we've got about 10 segments on this track alrighty that's all good now we're gonna need to put trains onto this uh, onto this track how are we gonna do that well the the way you do that is uh, with a depot so if we go to buildings grab a depot now there's um there's about a million ways that you could put a depot onto this i'm going to put a depot in the middle over here you want to do it on a on a relatively flat section and and i'm going to put this depot in in such a way that the trains can go either way on the track and the way to do that is if i put my depot in say about there then get a bit of track
and link that track up. Now, which way do the trains go? Right. Well, on my on my railway system, the the trains are going to be travelling uh, on the right hand side. So the train will be going in that direction up up the right hand track, and it'll be coming down on the left hand track. So we want the trains to be able to get onto the right hand track. So let's put that in. Uh, I might move that a little bit further to speed them up. So put that bit in. And then in the other direction, obviously we want to be on the other side. So this one, where's, where's, where's that start from? I can't see where my switch starts from. I think it's there. It, that'll do, that'll do anyway. So on this one, we want to be on that side of the track. So let's put it on like that. There we go. And one thing that um, probably a, a lot of new players don't don't know about is is when you cross a track like this. Can you see if I if I mouse over that, right? It comes up and says double slip switch. And if you click on that, it gives you the option to turn this into what's called a double slip switch. So as well as a train going across there, if we change it to a double slip switch, you'll see that these, these tracks will change to allow the train to go both straight on and go onto this track. Like that. That is your double slip switch. And it's very useful. But we don't need one here because the trains are only ever gonna go onto that side of the track in that direction. So we've uh, we've now enabled trains to get onto our tracks. Awesome source, good. So next we need to define a route that the uh, trains are going to travel along. So we'll choose new line. We'll click on the station at one end. Click on the station at the other end. Now because of the signalling that I've put on, it will automatically know to go up that way and down this way. Awesome. How simple is that? If um, if you like playing around with train sets, like like when you're a kid, if you like playing around with train sets, this is like the ultimate train set. <laughs> and it's train set plus because you've also got buses and trams and ships and airplanes. And the airplanes, oh, I do love the airplanes in this game. They're awesome. Okay, so we've now got a nice line defined to ship stuff back and forth between here but mm, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves because we've got to get the oil the crude oil to the oil refinery so that that can turn it into oil to ship up to turn it into fuel to bring it back and then distribute so how are we going to get the oil from these two to here well that's a very very good question and one which i will desperately try and answer <laughs> um the first thing i'm going to do i think is um is connect these with a road because i want to see if i can if i can have a solution that will pick up from both at the same time it would be really nice but whether it's possible i don't know we'll find out so i'm going to put in a little bit of road there then i uh, no, we don't then I'm going to run a bit of road up there, like that. And then we'll have a bit of road coming down there, like that. And hook that up like that. Okay, so what I want to do is try and get that to connect to that. Hooray, good. Now, if I grab a truck station, this is the truck station. And this, uh, this enables you to have cargo trucks. This over here is the bus tram station. That's the same thing, but for passengers. Oh yeah. Oh look, and if I put this in between the two, you see they both light up. That tells you that they're, they're in range. So if I put it down, see, right, now only this one's lit up. So if I put this here, only this would be in range. If I put it over here, only this one's in range. Put it in the, anywhere in the middle. It'll pick up from both. Awesome. So, Hmm, I'm looking at this now and thinking, you know, I could put a train station in and have a train taking it in. But I think we want to show off all the different vehicles, don't we? Yeah, of course we do. Of course we do. So we'll put in a truck. St 
stop here. Uh, and I'm going to show off some of the modularity of these modular buildings because they are just, oh man, it's just a whole new dimension. Wait till the modders get hold of this. The things that they're going to build. Right, let's throw that in. Okay, then I'm going to configure it. And now you get all of these blue dots which allow you to expand and you can expand it in several ways. So for example, um, I might want to be able to store more cargo on my platforms. In that case, I'd want to extend them. So I just grab a, a cargo platform and then just plop a couple of extra ones of those on. Or three or four or 10 or 100. It's entirely <laughs> up to you. You can have as many as you want, right? And then you can also add in um, uh, extra street accesses, which can be a two-way road like this. Or if you wanted to, you could have one way in, one way out. Entirely up to you. I, I'm kind of, kind of almost tempted to do that, but, but I won't, but I won't. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on uh, a second exit there, and then I'm gonna grab, and, and you can do passenger and cargo combined, by the way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm gonna grab a street, and I'm gonna run a street up here. Uh, so the question is going to be, where do I want my truck stop up here? And to be honest, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, will you do a nice curve? No, you won't. Okay, so let's bring you out kind of like that, maybe. I want this to be straight-ish, but, but not mega straight. So something like that is nice. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do nicely. Okay, so then we want a truck stop up here and we want the truck stop in range of the uh, oil refinery so let's grab building truck stop or truck station and now if i wanted to and i, and I wanted to like maximum speed and efficiency uh, i could actually put this out like quite a ways down here so i could actually put it like there but you get paid for transporting goods a certain distance, and it depends on the distance and the speed and all the rest of it. So um, I want them to bring it like pretty much right up here. So I think we'll put this um, this truck stop. You know what, for aesthetics, for pure aesthetics, I might flip you around a little bit like this and line you up with the pack tree and put you in kind of sort of something like that yeah there we go awesome source all right having done that we need to set up another line so we'll go new line and we'll connect those two truck stops hooray so we can now ship the crude oil to the oil refinery and we can ship from the oil refinery to the fuel refinery and we can ship it back Awesome. What do we do next? Well, next we need to distribute it to the towns that want fuel. Now, this is a big change from Transport Fever 1. In Transport Fever 1, all towns wanted all products. In Transport Fever 2, oh no, it's just not that easy. Now they only want two products. One for the industrial buildings, so um, fuel will be the requirement for the industry and commercial will demand one product in this case food so if we take a look at uh, the RCI right so we've got industry over here they'll want the they'll want the uh, fuel commercial over here will want the food but what what they've added and I, I really like this they've added um, when you when you pick up uh, a, a building well in fact as soon as you go to buildings right it shows you which buildings need what product so we're gonna take a, a truck unload stop and this is something that used to be a mod in Transport Fever 1 and it's now part of the vanilla game in Transport Fever 2 there's so many things that were mods that they've uh, the developers have added to the game just pure vanilla it's 
awesome. They've really listened to the player base. I, I love the guys at uh, Urban Games. They've done a fabulous job with this. So I want to. I want to get. Um, now you can see the white buildings are, are where the catchment area is, and you can see the catchment area is pretty big. I think we would probably want to put this somewhere around here. So let's throw that in there. So we need our trucks to drop off there. So where are our trucks going to be coming from? Well, they're going to be coming from here, aren't they? Of course they are. So we can use the same truck stop if we want to. Uh, and I tell you what, why not? Why not use the same truck stop? I, I see no reason not to use the same truck stop. So we'll get line manager, we'll get another new line, and we'll put in a line from Amarillo South Truck Station to the fuel drop-off point, which is just a little thing by the side of the road. So it doesn't, it means, the nice thing about this is you don't have to knock down buildings, and knocking down buildings is expensive. Right, so we'll put it in like that, and you can see that's the route that our trucks are gonna take to deliver. But if, if we wanted to, we could, uh, we could change that by putting in waypoints. And if you go to, if you go to streets uh, and go to, sorry, go to streets and go to this little button here, right? This is a waypoint. You could put waypoints in and then you add those waypoints to the route. So you can route your trucks and buses and whatever to go exactly the way that you want them to which is kind of important because, as you'll see, when we put in these truck lines, they will start producing emissions, which is not just not just fumes and whatever, it's also noise pollution and just general dis And I tell you what, the, the amount of dust and whatever that gets kicked up by horses or trains or whatever, unbelievable. So, and that will affect the, uh, the residential areas doesn't affect the commercial and the industrial, it affects the residential areas. So if we look here, uh, if I look at RCI, right, I've got my route going up this way, which is staying as far away as I can from the residential, which is a damn good idea. All right, so that's that. All right, so we're gonna be distributing to Amarillo, that's awesome. We're gonna to need to put some vehicles on that line, so we're gonna need a depot. So let's get um, road, buildings, we need a depot. Now we're gonna need, we're gonna need trucks on that line. We're also gonna need trucks on this line. So I think we should put our depot over here. And we'll, we'll make this kind of a bit of a conglomeration of buildings, which aesthetically tends to look quite nice. So we'll pop that in there. Right, but, that's only gonna give us demand for a very small amount of fuel, right? This only needs, this is only demanding at the moment 75 fuel. But as the town grows, that demand will go up. Good, excellent. So we want this place to grow. Okay, well. Uh, but 75 fuel, not enough. We need to ship to somewhere else as well. Well, we can ship out to St. Louis. Now you might be saying, no, 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 Sky, what are you doing? You're crazy. You've got the fuel already here. Why don't you just send it to St. Louis? Well, the reason is, if you wanna make big profits, you want, your, you want your transport lines running full or as close to full as you can get them in both directions. So if I start shipping fuel direct from here to St. Louis, right, then my trains are gonna be running back at least partially empty. And that means I'm not making as much money as I, should, uh, as I could. So what I want is to ship the fuel back here and then distribute it from here. So we'll have, uh, we'll have another truck route going out to St. Louis. So I think we'll grab a road. What do I want? I want a street and Maybe we'll run it down kind of to there. But I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it in a, in a hopefully aesthetically pleasing way. So I'm gonna run this road out and I'm gonna run it through these trees like this. Which kind of gives you kind of a reason for the road to be a bit bendy. Which I always think is a bit nice. Now I want this 
to be the primary connection. I don't want them to have to like stop at a junction and then turn a tight corner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect this road and then I'm going to hook that road up like that. So this is the, now the main road. And then I'm going to make that, that's the side road. So the vehicles from here will have to stop and then they've got a tight corner to turn. Whereas our trucks can just stroll straight through. All right, sweet. Oh, that's quite a long way, isn't it? Yes, it is. Good, because that'll make us lots of money. Right, so we need to put a drop-off point somewhere in St. Louis. And looking at this, I think we want a drop-off point round about here. Yep, that would give us good coverage, wouldn't it? Now, which way? I want to be probably going that way. I mean, it doesn't matter, to be absolutely honest. It's, it's absolutely irrelevant which way it is, but I want it going that way, because I feel like it. <laughs> All right, so having done that, let's put in, shall we, another line. We want the line manager. New line. This is going to go. Now, hang on a second. We're already using both of our platforms. Oh, no. Whatever can we do? <laughs> don't, you, don't you just love a bit of theatre? <laughs> um, what we're going to do is we're going to configure this and we're going to add another platform. So, I'm going to get another cargo, pop it in there. Now, all of these, I think we want to expand these, make them a bit bigger so we can store a bit more stuff there. Uh, now, let's see, can I... Ah, oh, I can't extend it any further. So, that's as much as I can do. Okay, no problem, not a problem. One, uh, one additional mechanic that they've added to Transport Fever 2 that wasn't in Transport Fever 1 if your stations are overcrowded, either with passengers or with cargo, then your passengers or cargo will start to disappear. Okay, and I think of it like this. If you're standing at a crowded bus stop or at a really crowded railway station and you're waiting and waiting, eventually you're gonna go, you know, forget this, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll find another way. Right, and the same with if you leave goods lying around on a on a platform like this, um, they're going to start getting like <laughs> taken, for want of a better word, they're going to get half inched. <laughs> so, uh, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to see if I um, if I remove this connection and maybe move it over a bit, would that be better for me? No, uh, no, nah, nah, that's fine. No, nah, that's fine, I think. Yeah, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Which way are we, we coming in? Uh, from Amarillo, we're coming in that way. Yeah, that's fine. And then we're going out that way to St. Louis. Yeah, that's fine. All right, let's put in the uh, let's put in the third line. So what do I want? I want uh, line manager, and I did. Uh, no, it's this blue line, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's this blue line. We want this to go from here, and hooray! It's got its own platform. Lovely, and it's going to go all the way uh, over there, and and halfway, the driver's going to stop, and he's going to wind down the window, and he's going to ask a passerby. Uh, can you show me the way to Amarillo? <laughs> so, so I did that. Oh. oh dear. It's painful, isn't it? <laughs> it really that. is. It really is. Uh, now, this we've got this warning up here about uh, St. Louis Wimble, uh, Wilmington. And if we click on this little pin thing, it'll show us where, uh, where the connection is missing. And it's because I say separated this so we need to put that back in so what i'm going to do i think is actually i'll do it here so we'll take out this little bit of road there we'll grab one of our streets i'll put a street going across there like that and then i mean i suppose i could just hook it up to that couldn't i it's not very pretty 
was, I was gonna end, hook it up to there, but I mean, to be honest, it doesn't actually matter all that much. Um, but let's do it, let's try and make it a little bit prettier. Let's do it like that. And then on this side, we'll hook that up to that. Nice little S-bend. I do like a good S-bend. And then that goes into there. Hooray, and now there are no warnings. And there was much rejoicing, okay. Right, all we need to do now is put some vehicles on and kick it off. So what are we gonna have? Okay, what do we actually need on here? Well, currently we're, we're gonna be shipping 65 fuel over here and 75 fuel over here. Now, I can tell you that if we're shipping that full amount, we will get plus 100 to the growth, okay? So this will go up from from like 233 residents to like over 400, like pretty much instantly, which is gonna mean that these numbers go up, right? So I would think in very short order, um, we're gonna be needing, at least I would have thought 150 going to each of these. Uh, now the maximum that the fuel refinery can produce is 400. And if we grow these two towns enough, right, we can have all of that uh, fuel being distributed to just these two cities. This is why you need a lot more industry than you did in Transport Fever 1. And this is why it encourages you to build more lines and there's so much more you can do in, uh, in, in Transport Fever 2 than in Transport Fever 1. So yeah, I think we're gonna go for max capacity right from the beginning, if I can. We'll see, we'll <laughs> see. So in order, to, um, in order to get max capacity, we're gonna have to ship 400, 800 oil from these two oil, uh, from these two oil wells to the oil refinery. There, that 800 crude oil will get turned into 400 refined oil. So we need to ship 400 oil up there. That'll get turned into 400 fuel, which will get shipped back here. So how do you figure out how many vehicles you need? Right, well, I'll show you. So we're gonna start off, um, let's see, what's this? This is, uh, this is line two, and this is, my coding system is very different from the, from the kernels. Um, I use a system where I use like RF. This stands for road freight. RP would be road passenger. So that would be a bus line. And this is going to be, um, for now I'm not gonna worry, am I gonna worry about the town name? Yeah, I suppose. So this is gonna be St. Louis uh, Crude. So this is the, uh, the crude oil line. So we're shipping the crude oil. How many vehicles are we going to need on this? The answer is going to be like quite a lot. So by vehicles, what vehicles have we got? Well, we've got loads of vehicles. All right, let's narrow it down. So we'll filter it to just cargo vehicles. And the further you go down, the newer the, the vehicles. And we're going to go like right down. But let's have a look at the, um, the Mac AC tarpaulin truck. This has a capacity of nine, does uh, 19 miles an hour, which is kind of awesome. But there's also this Mac AC flatbed truck. Now, if we look at that, this does all cargo types, 19 miles an hour, nine capacity. This does 19 miles an hour, oh, it's only eight capacity, but it does do all cargo types. The other thing to look at is the loading speed and the emissions. Well, the emissions are the same, the loading speed is the same, so yeah. We want to use these. Uh, what's the one before that? The one before that is the Benz truck. Now this, see this won't carry oil, so we'd need this one. This one's only seven, but hang on a second. This is faster. This is 25 miles an hour. So 25 miles an hour, capacity seven, but look, the emissions are higher. Oh no, they're not. No, the emissions are lower even. So, huh we'd actually be better off going with this one. It's, um, power is the same. 
I mean, the capacity is only one less. We're going to go with the we're going to go with the Benz. We're going to go with the Benz tarpaulin trucks. Oh hell yeah, these Mac ones, not all that impressive to be honest. Yeah, all right. So, Mac uh, Benz tarpaulin trucks it is. How many do we want? Well, um, it's kind of difficult to just guess how many vehicles you want. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put. Like for starters, I'm going to put 10 trucks on. That's going to cost me 850,000. Okay. Buy those. Cha ching. I love that cha ching. Um, <laughs> so we buy the vehicles and then we have to. So those are sitting in the depot now. Uh, this depot here, Amarillo Road Depot. We need to put them on the line. So we're going to say, okay, we want those on the RF St. Louis crude line. Now, when I do that, if I then go and have a look, at the, no, I can't get it from here. If I look at the uh, the St. Louis line, it tells you the rate. Now this means how much approximately annual throughput you will get. Okay, so this is going to move like about 300. Now in my experience, when you actually when you actually start running them, this will usually go up a bit. But what that means is we need, I mean, at least double that. Um, or we will do eventually. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start running with 10, right? And then as the production increases, I'll increase the number of vehicles up here uh, until the rate gets up to 800. And then that'll be shipping all of the uh, the production of these two oil wells over here. Okay, so that's, that's those trucks. What else? Well, we need trains that'll carry 400 in each direction. Okay, so why am I going to the tools factory? I wanted the train depot. Buy vehicles. What? Oh, look at all the lovely trains. What are we going to use? <laughs> oh, so many cool trains. Oh, the mogul. One of my favourites, the mogul. That is that is the like the quintessential American Wild West steam train. The PLM two twenty. Very streamlined, the PLM. It was revolutionary when, when it was in, introduced. Um, the Russian class OB. The 10 wheeler. This is a British train, the A3 slash 5. The, the consolidation. Oh, we've got the 442 Atlantic. Another classic American train. The Russian class SCH. I'm using those a lot in my, uh, in my current video series. Uh, we've got the BR-75, another classic British locomotive. Uh, the Grand Duchy of, of Baden, State Railway. Oh, it's, no, that's, that, that's, that is, Brit I'm sure that's British. It was later used throughout Southern Germany, but I'm sure it's British. But, hey. Oh, we've got the Mikado. This is a Chinese train, which I haven't seen before, the JF-1. Very cool. 50 miles an hour, PG. What else have we got? Okay, that's that's pretty much all of it. And then we got things like the crocodile. Some some strange old trains around the place. What are we gonna go with? I think, let's see, the Atlantic. I think the Atlantic was more of a passenger train, I think. Was it? I don't know. I, I don't, I, honestly, I don't know. Um, what's the speed on the A3-5? 62. It's, this is a nice powerful, uh, a, a nice powerful freight train. It costs 3.7 million. Wow. Just, <laughs> just for the locomotive. It is not cheap. So I think, Maybe we'll maybe we'll come down a little bit from that just to get ourselves started. Um, hang on, what's where? How much is a? How much is an SCH? But where is an SCH? Here we go. Here's the SCH. The SCH. The SCH is one and one and a half million. That's forty-seven miles an hour, which is probably fine to get us started. So we'll go with um. I think we'll probably go with one of these. Uh, 3.7, God, that's expensive. How much is the PLM? 
See, so PLM is 1.6, but it's only 37 miles. Away. The, the Russian class SCH is 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 a is a really good value for money locomotive. We're going to go with an SCH. Let's um, let's buy one of those. Uh, no, I didn't want to buy that. Not yet. I want to put some wagons on it first. Let's sell that. Yes, thank you. Right, so I want to add that to the line. Yes, and then or add it to the the consist that we're building, and then we want pa uh, cargo wagons. Now, you just need to make sure that your cargo wagons are roughly, people put too much emphasis on this, but roughly matched to the speed of your locomotive. So this thing can do 47 miles an hour. So ideally we want, um, we want cars that can do 47 miles an hour. Uh, so we are gonna be shipping oil in one direction and fuel in the other direction. Now this is why oil is very good because tank cars will carry both crude oil, well, they'll carry crude oil, oil, and fuel. So we can use the same cars in both directions. This is why it's a much better way to start than either food, because um, grain requires gondolas, and uh, food in the opposite direction requires box cars, uh, which are these, these guys. So you can't be shipping the same thing um, like full both both directions uh, the same goes for uh, trying to do building materials oil is definitely the best thing to start with so let's see this tank car here will do 50 miles an hour that's perfect for us our loco only does 47 and we'll go with I don't know uh, each one of these holds 12 we're gonna want something like I don't know like probably eight or nine of these. What have I got? One, two, three, four, five, six, maybe eight. Maybe a hundred in each direction. Now let's see. That gives us, um, if, you, if you mouse over this, it will give you your profile. Now we're running on a flat track, so we're gonna be fine. And it will take um, 108 seconds or 1,500 meters, which is, which is close to 1,500 yards. <laughs> Meters, yards, use them interchangeably. Uh, it's gonna take us like 108 seconds or 1,500 meters yards to get up to full speed. This is why, uh, like if if the top speed of these cars was say like, say 40, 40 miles an hour, right? It's not that big of a deal because the, you're more worried about acceleration than you are really about the top speed on a relatively short line like this. Well, it's what I love about Transport Fever. That I love the accuracy, all the details that go into it. And you can be as fussy or not fussy, really, as you want. It's, 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 there's tremendous flexibility. Like new players can come in, they can ignore most of this and just like get on with it and ship stuff around. But if you want to be really fussy and pay attention to every detail, like exactly what the acceleration is and all that kind of stuff, you can, you can. So um, we'll try, we'll try this. Now this train is going to cost us six million each, and I want a couple of these. So we're going to have to go to the bank account and we're going to have to uh, borrow a lot more money. So how much can I borrow? Let's see. Okay, I can borrow 27 million. All right, let's do this. So I want uh, two of these puppies, please, to start, at least to start off with. Uh, buy that. Now let's take a look at the line and see what kind of capacity that's going to give me. So if we look at, oh, no, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to look at line one. Here we go. Uh, it's not going to tell me until I start running them. So I'll have to see how they do and we'll check on that. Okay, so that means we can get uh, the trucks hauling the oil to the oil refinery. We get the train taking it down to the uh, fuel refinery and bringing the fuel back. Right, now we need the trucks on the distribution lines. So let's do those. We want buy vehicles. Uh, how many vehicles am I going to need? Like right now, I don't really know. So what I'm gonna do is just buy some trucks and then I'll kind of modify it as we go along. So I'm gonna buy, uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five trucks. And we'll put those onto line 
three and then we'll buy another five trucks and we'll put those onto line four and I suppose just so that you guys know exactly what's what I should name these things shouldn't I really so let's go over here so line one this is going to be train freight uh, train freight and this is oil slash fuel and then line three is going to be uh, RF and this is fuel and this is uh, Amarillo so this is RF should be RF Amarillo fuel Amarillo fuel cool and then the other one is going to be RF St. Louis fuel so RF St. Louis fuel Boom. All right, cool. Guys, we are ready to turn it on and see <laughs> some stuff moving, shall we? Let's do it. Go. Oh, look. Shall I, shall, shall I slow it down? Like, just so that you can like, see vehicles pulling out and stuff. So these are our, uh, these are our road vehicles. Now, the, the camera tools have been upgraded, if you haven't seen this already, on, uh, in, in Colonel failures segment of the uh, of the of the stream um, as well as having your regular follow cam right third person follow cam like this you've also got first person cam okay well you're like hang hey, now we had this in we had this in transport fever one yeah but what you can do now is you've got controls which allow you to move the camera around relative to the vehicle so you can go up and down and side to side and backwards and forwards so you can get exactly the position that you want to get the the best view of the truck as it's driving around which is kind of awesome let's go over to the trains shall we i think we should so what are we gonna do we're gonna go over to the trains where are the trains did I actually put the trains onto the lines? I don't think I did, did I? No, I didn't. Here we go. So, you guys need to be put on TF oil fuel. Hooray! Now we can watch the trains go out. I should make sure. Yeah, I want to turn off these icons. All right, let's do the same thing. So, can you do the same thing with the trains? Oh, yeah, you can. So, if I want a driver's eye view, can I do a driver's eye view? Oh yes, I can. So I do. A, do you want to see the fireman's view? Here's the fireman's view. Looking out of the fireman's window. Seriously, if you are <laughs> a uh, if you're a train enthusiast, and and you like the the aesthetics. You like riding around on trains and you like beautiful environments and stuff and seeing the, the, the different transport types running through very, very beautiful scenery, then boy, this is the game for you. When I say this is the ultimate virtual train set, I am not kidding. This thing is amazing. All right, so we've put, um, we've put the trains on, we've put the vehicles on. Now let's have a look. Uh, so how do we how do we manage all of this stuff? Well, there's loads of tools to help you manage it really efficiently This down here. This is the line statistics. If I bring this up, you can see our four lines and It tells you the frequency of the trains. So how long it takes the, 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 the trains to uh, Well, it's actually the frequency with which they will appear at a particular stop so we will get one of these trains appearing at this stop every 142 seconds. Well, for passengers, that can be useful information. For cargo, really what you're interested in, the trans is, is, interested in is the transfer rate. And you can see this increasing. And like I said, when you first put vehicles onto the line, um, it will tend to go up a little bit from there. So we can see these two trains here. Currently, it's telling us that they're gonna have a transport capacity 
of five uh, 500, right? Which is actually more than we need. Uh, maximum, we're only going to need 400 capacity. Ah, oh, well, damn. What are we going to do? Do we have to send our trucks, like our trains, back to the depot and redo them? And nah, it's all very easy. Click on the line. Go to manage vehicles. Go to replace vehicle. And what did we, what did we have running on? We, I was using uh, the SCHs, wasn't I? Yes, I was using the SCHs. We'll have a Russian SCH, but instead of having eight cars on here, maybe we should go down to like six. So let's go cargo wagons down to the bottom. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Replace. Boom. Oh no, did I have SCHs on there before? Yeah, I did. Yeah, 47 miles an hour. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. Okay, and it instantly replaces them with your new train. Now, I know that some people are like, oh, shouldn't you have to go back to the depot or whatever to change the trains? I tell you what, it saves you so many management hassles working this way. You, like seriously, you can't believe. So I am very, very glad that it works this way. Let's uh, Let's jump on board. So let's bring up my statistics. So how much are we going to be moving now? So according to this, our rate is 382, which is almost the 400 we need. And it's going to take us a while to build up to that. So this is probably a very good idea right now. Okay, cool. So what we should do probably is repay off as much of our loan as we can, because we don't want to be paying interest on money that we're not using. So. We'll pay off as much as we can. Cool. Alrighty, so I tell you what, why don't we why don't we follow the journey? Follow the journey of the of the oil. So we've got a truck here that's just picked up seven crude oil. Awesome sauce. And you can see we've got loads of oil sitting here, filling up this uh, this platform to the point where you get a little asterisk and it says some cargo items are lost because the station is overloaded. Oh no, that's not good. So what we need is um, potentially to increase the frequency and move the stuff up. But let's have a look at the line statistics again. Um, what do we got? So this is the Amarillo, sorry, the, the St. Louis crude line. And we've currently got capacity for 345. Well, that's nowhere near the 400, sorry, the 800 that these are producing. So let's get some more trucks on there. So St. Louis crude, let's go to manage vehicles. And hmm, what do I want to do? Well, I could buy some more trucks or I could use the clone feature, which is another thing that's been, uh, been added in Transport Fever 2. So I can just say, you know what, clone all of these vehicles or some of them. So I could say, um, like clone those two, or I could just say clone everything. And we need at least another 10 trucks on here. So I'm just gonna say clone everything. Confirm mass clone. Do you wanna clone all vehicles? Yes, I do. Oh, you haven't got enough money. Oh man, I go and borrow some more money then. So let's borrow another million. Go back and manage vehicles, clone, mass clone, yes please, cha-ching, and we've now got 22 vehicles on this line. So apparently I had 11, I thought I had 10, I've apparently I've got 22. Good news. Let's crank this up, shall we? So let's check our line statistics now. How much can we ship on this line now? St. Louis crude, we can now ship 763. That's almost the 800 maximum. So I tell you what, let's get, let's do it. Let's get up to the, well, that's not what I wanted. Uh, let's get up to the 800 maximum. So I'm going to say manage vehicles and I'm going to say clone me, clone me one more vehicle. There we go. So what does that get me up to? 742. 738. Of 
Oh, oh, oh. they're plowing through this stuff. But because because they're having to queue up and wait at the moment, the rate is going down. But once they space out a bit, I'm hoping that that rate's going to go back up. But we'll, we'll have to see. Only time will tell. And it looks, yeah, we're getting through all the oil now. That is very good news. So we're shipping everything. That's good. Now I could I could save a bit of money at this point by getting rid of a few of these trucks, but you can see they're not having to wait as long now. And as they space out a bit, is this gonna? Yeah, see this is starting to creep up now. Here we go, 765. Seven, uh, sorry, six six ninety one, six ninety eight, seven twelve. I think that's going to get very close to 800 now that now that this is all starting to smooth out. 757, 774, 780. Here we go. And 792. Come on, one more. Oh, one more. One more. No, one more. Come on, tick up. It's close enough. We'll call it 800. All right, cool. So that's our truck line. So let's have a, a little run down with our, one of our trucks. So he's going to fly down here, carrying some oil. So carrying some crude oil, specifically. Down here, into the truck depot. Drop that off. There we go. Thank you very much, Mr. Truck Driver. That oil, that crude oil, goes into the oil refinery. The oil refinery... Um, takes the oil and starts uh, the crude oil and starts converting converting it into oil now this thing is currently at level one this particular factory has two levels right we look at another factory like the fuel refinery the fuel refinery where's the fuel refinery? the fuel refinery the fuel refinery has four levels right different factories have different levels there you go just thought I'd show you that <laughs> Not particularly crucial, but I thought I'd show you. So anyway, uh, this one starts out producing 200. When it goes up to the second level, it'll produce 400. So this goes up two steps in 200s. The fuel fuel refinery goes up in four steps of 100. Why it does that, I don't know, but it does. So yeah, I, I've no idea why those two would be different. They both produce ultimately 400, but they just grow in different steps. It's what it is, I suppose. Alrighty, so how do you get this to grow? Well, the way you get it to grow is you get it, all of these three things above this line. Okay, so what are these three things? The first is production. Uh, actually, if I go to the context help over here, it'll explain. The production parameter indicates how many units are produced every year. Okay, that's pretty obvious. Um, so what's shipment then? Shipment parameter indicates how many units per year are shipped to other industries or towns. Oh, so that's what we're actually shipping out. Good to know. And then, well, what's transport then? Transport is the percentage of units that actually arrive at their destination. Now, this is linked to this mechanic where if you've got stops that are getting over full and stuff's going missing, then obviously you're not delivering 100% or you're not transporting 100% of what you could transport, right? So you have to get all of these increased in order to get the thing to, to upgrade. All right, cool. So are we uh, are we moving all the fuel that we're, we're shipping in? Looks, looks okay at the moment, kinda sorta-ish. Oh, we've got a truck coming in and picking up some of that. That's good. Okay, all looks reasonable. So now let's let's look at profits. Are we making a profit? Because that is really, really crucial. We need to be making profits. And making a profit in Transport Fever 2, I think is um, a little bit more difficult than it was in Transport Fever 1. You've got to be very clever about how you construct your lines. And having, having a cash cow line like this one, 
where you're shipping um, full in both directions. That'll make you a lot of money, right? If you don't, you're gonna you're gonna risk not making money. The the game, certainly to a to a newcomer, uh, can be very challenging at first. Anyway, let's have a look. So line statistics. Oh look, all of our lines are making a profit. Well, that's nice. And it's because, like, if you if you look at the if you look at the numbers. Um, well, it's kind of difficult because the, the the trains are running a bit empty at the moment. Yeah, you've just unloaded. You're just loading up with oil. But generally speaking, yeah, um, everything's making a profit, which is which is awesome source. Um, I'm, cons I'm a little bit concerned that, for example, these trucks, uh, if we don't have enough demand at the uh, oil refinery and the fuel refinery, we, um, we won't be shipping enough oil up here uh, to keep these trucks in profit. But at the moment, actually, things seem pretty good. Now, as we start to deliver fuel out to uh, Amarillo and St. Louis, right? Uh, so I tell you what, we um, we rode the we rode the oil truck up here. It's gone into the refinery. the The refined oil is put on the platform. You can see it. You can see it filling up here. So go on. We'll 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 do the journey. We'll do the journey. Here comes uh, here comes train two. Let's jump on board train two, which I tell you what, let's uh, let's name these trains, and I'm going to name this in uh, in honour of the developers, developers and the publishers of, uh, of Transport Fever Two. So we will call this the Urban Games Express. And the other one. We'll call uh, the Good Shepherd. Urban Games are the developer of uh, Transport Fever 2, and Good Shepherd are the publisher. And I'd like to give a big shout out to all the people that work at both uh, Urban Games and Good Shepherd for inviting me to come and do the launch day stream. Very, very, very nice of them, and I'm loving being here with all you guys. So, the the train has dropped off the oil at the fuel refinery. It's turned into fuel. This has now picked up the fuel and we're carrying 45 fuel back along the track. Then this is gonna be put onto these. Uh... Now, let's pause for a second because you can now see that after we've run for a bit, we're, over... we're overloaded at our cargo station, right? And that means we need to get more trucks running to distribute the fuel, right? Which is no big surprise because if we look at the stats on uh, Amarillo fuel, we're only moving. We've only got a rate of 58. On St. Louis fuel, we've only got a rate of like 45. This needs to be like, I mean, at the very least 100. Um, and it probably needs to be more than that. So let's double the vehicles on here. We're currently running with five. Let's up that to 10. So let's go with, what do I want? I want um, the vehicle manager. And on Amarillo fuel, I'm gonna say clone all those vehicles, yes. And on St. Louis fuel, I'm gonna say clone all those vehicles. Yes, thank you very much. Off we go. So there's a whole load more trucks gonna pile out of here. Which is beautiful, but you can see we're tr we're starting to get a bit of congestion here. Well, that's not very good. Well, can we do something about that? Um, well, okay, there's a couple of things we could do. We could go into configure here, and I could add uh, an extra street access, say over here, and then hook that road up. Uh, I want streets. Hook that up like that. 
So now, let's bring this up so we can see the lines. Uh, now I could get them to, to use this road and go in this way. Right. I'd have to put a waypoint in here and get them to go in this way. The thing is that even if you do that, they are still going to want to go up and down this this central bit because they just have to. It's part of the pathing. They have to go up and down here. But um, we could get them to maybe go out that way if I put in a waypoint. But you know what? It, it's not so overcrowded that they're actually causing each other a problem. So I'm going to leave them as they are for now. But what I am going to do is maybe if I get rid of the depot from there, I wonder if I could get them to come in from this side because that would help. So let's uh, let's configure this and put in a street access on that side. Hook that up. Let's see if they'll use that. So let's go hook that up like say like that. Now let's have a look at the lines. Yes. And now this truck line is going to use that route in, which will reduce the congestion a little bit. But you'll see it's they, they all all the lines still use this little central bit here. So there are limits to what you can do. Okay, awesome source. So the um, the fuel is getting shipped. Look, this is fully. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not quite full. It's not. It's not. We haven't got the overloaded symbol. So. We seem to be just about okay at the moment, but I am thinking that that uh, that St. Louis line needs a bit more capacity. Let's have a look. We are running, yeah, Amarillo is 98, St. Louis is only 69, so I think a few more vehicles on there would be a good thing. So let's crank that up a little bit. Manage vehicles, let's have an extra, say, an extra four vehicles. Let's clone those four vehicles. Oh, no, that was replaced. No. Clone. Oh, no depot found. Because I demolished it. Need to put it back in. <laughs> Let's put my put my depot back in. There we go. And uh, Amarillo Road Depot by vehicle. Uh, no, let's do it on the line. Which one was I doing? I was doing uh, I was doing St. Louis, wasn't I? Yeah, that's the uh, St. Louis fuel, it's the long one. Yeah, one, two, three, four. Clone those vehicles, hooray. So, got some more vehicles coming out of the depot. But we're still getting, we're still getting a bit of a, bit of a build up on the Amarillo fuel. But you need to look at the spacing. So if I turn on my icons, for vehicles. Uh, let's just turn on the ones for road vehicles. You want to look at your spacing because it takes a while for the trucks to evenly space themselves out. And if you've got a long gap, then it can look like the fuel is building up a lot when in actual fact it's not really. So for this, it's these vehicles. Uh, sorry, it's these vehicles. And look, you can see we've got a big gap in between that vehicle and the next one. So they just need to space out better. And then I think we should be relatively okay. But now that we are shipping the stuff out to the towns, let's have a look at the growth. So Amarillo, Amarillo. Oh, look at this. Now Amarillo only needed about, well, they both needed about 70, 75-ish fuel when we started but because we've been shipping fuel out there look at the growth plus 80 percent to the growth so the the starting size of amarillo was 195 people we're now plus a hundred percent so the target size of this city is 390 it's currently 369 but going up and this will change around depending on, on these different factors. So this will this will constantly be changing, like going up and down. Right, now there's one other thing that we need to put in. And this is, uh, this is a new thing that they've added in Transport Fever 2, and it's very cool. And that is the headquarters. 
So, uh, well, you know what? We've already got our company up to level four. Let's build our headquarters. And our headquarters building, you can put this anywhere. And it starts out as a tiny, tiny little building like this and it grows into a huge skyscraper. And when I say huge, I do mean huge. <laughs> it, it is, come on, picture, it is huge, isn't it? It is pretty large, it's, yeah. <laughs> Uber. <laughs> yes, yes, it's, <laughs> now, 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 this is a family channel. Um, let's pop that in there. I mean, I should, probably should have given it pride of place in the center or something, but we'll put it there and we'll, we'll keep an eye on it. And as you grow this, and if you, if you mouse over it, it does tell you the different things that you get points for. And basically, the, the more ships and the more lines and uh, the more trains and the more trucks and whatever, you get various points for. And uh, in my current series, I think I'm up to... Uh, I'm over level 60 now. Can you can you remember what level it is, picture? Um, so, it was it was like 50 points. I remember. I don't know what level though. It was pretty high. Well, the company score is the number of points you've got. So, yeah, because you added it up, didn't you? Because I was like, yeah. that's way too high, and you were like, no, 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 it's it's correct. Like, 52, 54, something like that? Yeah, 50 odd. 50 odd. Yeah. 50, 50 something. <laughs> and, and seriously, the thing gets enormous. Like, it's like <laughs> bigger than these skyscrapers. It's huge and it's big and it's shiny. <laughs> and it's got a it's got an ornament. Like, see this little this little fountain here. Well, it gets much bigger and it ends up with kind of like the transport fever. Um like splash screen, where you've got a, a, a golden train, plane, and ship. It's very, very cool. And it even has, look, it has a little sign with your, your steam name. So this is Skystorm Transport. Loving it, loving That's it. That's very cool. <clears throat> it's good practice to save the game regularly. This is possible at any time. Um, but the game also auto saves and you can, uh, in fact, can I show you that in the settings? Controls. Uh, and now I think you have to set this up on the main menu, the options from the main menu. But yeah, you can set how often you want the game to, to, uh, to auto save. I think I've got mine set to every 15 minutes. So, so there you go. <clears throat> so now this has been running for a little while. Let's, um, let's have a look at the profitability of our lines again. Oh, ho, 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 ho. I told you, didn't I, guys? <laughs> if you set up a line like this red line where you're shipping product backwards and forwards so the trains are relatively full in both directions, you make millions. This is the way to make real money in the game. And you can see we're already up to like 13, 14 million. So I can go in here, I can repay. Oh, oh if I go to the right screen, if I go to the finances screen. Um, this gives you a company valuation as well. Like how much your company's worth. We should see how much the Colonel's company's worth. <laughs> I've got a sneaky suspicion. Mine might be worth more than his. Mine's bigger than yours. <laughs> so we should have a competition, shouldn't we? Me and the Colonel. Who can have the biggest, uh, the highest value company at the end of the day? That'd be fun. Well, it's fun because I'm in the lead. <laughs> well, our company score is now up to six. This is going to fly up, I tell you. Let's go back to the, fly, fly, the finances. The finances. We are making currently like four million well that four and a half million last year but you see see the the date is the same because i've got the date paused right but it's still it's still the game is still running months and years right but it just doesn't change the the, the date right but it's still running i'm still paying my loan interest and stuff right so let's um, let's get as much repaid as we can. 
Oh my god, I've already paid my loan off. <laughs> Don't you just love it when a plan comes together? Uh, uh, the Colonel says his company score is seven. Really? Uh huh. Your company score is seven? <laughs> oh man. Really? Mine's only six. Oh. Mine's only six. My value's gone away. I, I've got to say, this, it's a little baguette. Because this, this has happened in my, uh, in my main series as well. The value decides to go to zero. I don't know whether it's linked to paying off the debt, but it is a bug. That should be showing like, like whatever it should be. But um, yeah. So, um, so yeah, I am now two million actually in, in the green. I have two million in the bank with no debt. Loving it, and I'm making like four million, four four and a half million, almost three and a half million. Don't know how much we're gonna make this year. Quite a lot. So there you go. Uh, I've managed in my first two hours to uh, to set up a very profitable goods line that is going to be the basis of our transport empire. Let's turn off all these nasty icons so that we can enjoy the beautiful scenery. And I think we should, um, we should slow the game down. I think we should jump on a train and have a nice ride along on a train, don't you? And I'll... Uh, I'll see. I'll see if there are any questions that you guys have got for me. Let's let's, let's get a let's get a nice view going on here. So let's, let's maybe have. What should we have? Driver's eye view. Bit of a driver's eye view. Drop down a little bit. There we go. Let's have a bit of a driver's eye view. Eye view. Time flies by when you're the driver of a train and you ride, <laughs> ride on the footplate there and back again. <laughs> Under bridges, over bridges to your destination. <laughs> oh, that's brought back a few memories, hasn't it, guys? You know, there was a question on the Twitch chat earlier. You know when you updated the train, you upgraded it? Yeah. They were wondering if you lose um, cargo when you do that, when you do an upgrade. No, this is something that they actually... Um, they actually changed in Transport Fever 1 in, in one of the later updates. Uh, when you replace trains, you don't lose either passengers or cargo. It keeps the passengers and cargo. This is, it was it was one of my, I wouldn't say it was one of my biggest complaints, but it was a complaint that I had and they fixed it. And th this is one thing that makes me um, very able to recommend this game, uh, even at this very early stage is because when, when Transport Fever 1 first came out, there were quite a few issues. There were some performance issues. There were, there were some bugs that needed to be ironed out. But there were also some gameplay mechanics, like losing cargo and passengers when you replaced trains, uh, that weren't ideal. And uh, Urban Games and Good Shepherd put out, I don't know how many free updates. Um, I will point out, they put out zero, zero paid updates, but they put out, I think, at least five or six free updates over the period of, what, three years? Uh, they fixed all the performance issues, they made, uh, they fixed all the bugs that were around, and they made loads of mechanics improvements over that three years. And as well as that, you've got the modding community who churned out thousands of amazing, amazing mods. Uh, a, a lot of which I used in my series, primarily for the aesthetics. 
Um, so this is a game that you can you can purchase with a very very high degree of confidence that even if we do find problems with it that this is a developer who is going to stick around invest in the game for the future and is going to fix and resolve those problems oh don't you love this tropical environment i love riding along in amongst the palm trees and whatever we need to put in a coastal railway and i tell you what we do have some great coastline on this map because i i did have a i did have a sneaky peek at this map earlier and uh, now where's where's wilmington okay so we've got wilming wilmington over here and what i was thinking of doing was putting in a passenger route which went from wilmington along the coast and and by the side of the mountain which let's face it i mean this is a great view along here right so we'll go from uh, from wilmington up to st louis and then from st louis up to show me the way to amarillo <laughs> we'll go up to amarillo and then from amarillo again between the mountains and the coast we can go up to uh, el monte and then from el monte along the coast up to uh, Haywood, and we can put in a blubbered freaking awesome bridge across here. <laughs> I can't wait to put in that bridge. I do love a good bridge. Everybody that knows me <laughs> on YouTube knows I do love my bridges. Well, we can have a beautiful bridge across there. Um, and I thought that that would make a make a really nice line from from Wilmington all the way up here, and then maybe we can branch off. Uh, and have one line that goes to Haywood, but then also have another uh, another line that continues and goes uh, Glendale uh, again along the coast, go round the mountain to uh, Vallejo, and then Salt Lake, Tallahassee, and then we could have a line going through the centre through the mountains, which I love the idea of, and this is a great view. We can go from Tallahassee up, up to Allentown, and then through. This like these mountains, which is just beautiful, but this bit of terrain is a little bit tricky. I I can't really see a way of getting through here without doing a tunnel, unless oh you know what I could put in here, guys. Uh, I tell you what, especially with this, with this little, this is kind of a little bit of a basin here. Or at least it's um, it's one one half of a basin. I could put in a spiral. Oh! <laughs> we could put in a we could like if I came in. Let's see. So we're coming in. We're coming in from from Allentown. We could come in, go like up the side of here, then have the spiral coming around here, taking us up. And then we could have the, the bridge part of the spiral going across here. And then we could bring the track down maybe across here. Or maybe even have a spiral on the other side because we've got another little bit of a basin here. So we could have maybe a spiral on both sides. How cool would that be? Would you guys like to see a <laughs> spiral railway on this map? Because we could do it. Look at the cash rolling in. It's beautiful. And I tell you what. Pretty much as soon as I unpause the date and get the uh, get the date rolling along, we're gonna be getting some fantastic trains. Um, the Flying Scotsman, the Mal we get the Mallard in like 1935. Uh, I'm not sure what year we get Big Boys. Um, so so yeah, I am gonna be handing you back over to uh, to Colonel Failure uh, very soon. Uh, I need to get him into the into the chat. I've been neglecting him. I'll, I'll bring him into the chat. Um, so I'm going to be handing over to uh, Colonel Failure. He's going to be taking over for a couple of hours. And then I will be back. But I tell you what, you won't see any big boys on Colonel Failure's segment. So <laughs> if you want to see big boys, yes, you'll be sticking around for Skystorm, won't you? Ha, 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 Colonel. What have you got to say to that? Well, he's not going to say anything because I need to get him... 
So, hang on a second. Um, Picture, I tell yes. you what, do you want to say goodbye to everybody for a little bit now? Because I'm going to have to switch chats to bring uh, the Colonel on board. Okay, yes. All right, I will um, see you guys again in a couple of hours. Everybody, everybody say bye-bye to Picture Perfect. <laughs> She will be back with me in a couple of hours. Where where the hell are my trains? I've completely lost track. Of it. Oh, here we go. St. Louis and Amarillo. Over here. Here we go. Let me let me go back to riding on the trains. God, I love riding on the trains. Let's jump on board. Here we go. Let's uh let's back up a bit to our to our pretty much our driver's view. Like that. Alrighty, let me see if I can uh, if I can figure out this um, this whizzy technology nonsense. <laughs> so um, I need to switch chats. So let me turn off let me turn off picture. Bye bye picture. I'll talk to you in a minute. And um, I'll switch to I'll switch to Colonel Failure. So I just need to see if um, I just need to see if Colonel Failure is around now. Let me let me try calling him up. Colonel Failure, are you there? Colonel Failure, are you there? Mm. Yes. No one likes no one likes a gloater. <laughs> Set yourself up an oil line, Colonel. I've done, I have I have done. Oh, no, you have done. Yeah, that's the reason my company is more valuable than yours. I left it running. Um, so, uh, so, so effectively, I've had a couple of extra hours on you. So uh, oh. that's, that's why I'm ahead. Oh, guys, he's been running in a background. Is that fair? Is that fair? I don't, I don't, we never stated competition up front, so uh, hush. Also, <laughs> you, start, you started in 1900, if I'm right. You start in and I started in. I started in 1920. 1920? Yeah, oh, yeah, I started in 1920. Well, no wonder you're making money like there's no tomorrow. You get the good stuff. I'm starting with all the archaic bits and pieces. And what, what year did you start in? 1850. You start? Oh, you started a, like a full-on 1850? Yeah. Good yeah, so I'm you. at 18, 1872 you. now. Yeah, I, I thought I would start in, um, start in 1920 to make sure that I could jump straight into showing the guys the, uh, the airports... And the yep, planes. That's um, coming in my next segment, guys. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll prob I, there's a fighting chance I get to planes this time. Uh, I'm going to use uh, some time acceleration to uh, to beef me forward. Oh, are you going to show off all the... I, don't you just love the ability to manipulate time the way we can now? Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful. Um, I, it's it's a bit weird because, I mean, effectively, the timer is... Uh, the, the time you're setting is basically which vehicles would you like unlocked? Yeah. And and you know and what uh, what setting do you want your houses to look like? But it works really well and the way the money works as well is excellent. And I, I think it is confusing people because I think people still think that the the date has to be in some way linked to how the money's being worked out. But of course it isn't. It's completely separate. No, it's but, all time based. But so, what it yeah. allows you, what it allows you to do, guys, this is this is why I think per personally, for me, this is the best new feature in the game. Yeah. It allows me if if I want to start in 1850, and I want to build up a stagecoach network, like before I start, right? Then I can do that because I can just pause the date at 1850, build up a stagecoach network. And then over time, start to replace that with a rail network, right? So I set up my stage coach network, then start the gap, start the time running, and then start to build up my train network. Or if I want to build up a great big steam train network, but I don't want to move on or have to move on to, to diesel and electric trains. I just want, you know, I want a 1950s, 1960s steam train setup. Then yeah. I can do that. Right. Well, you or, quite rightly described it as uh, a model train set build. Oh, pretty. and yeah. and it really is. And if your favourite era, uh, you just want to rest in your favourite era forever, go for it. That's right. And I think a lot of people, a lot of people criticise Transport Fever from from the purely tycoon aspect. 
And if you're talking about a pure tycoon game, right, then yeah, there's there's no AI opponents, there's no there's no multiplayer. Um, if you want though that kind of tycoon game, there are plenty of other tycoon games out there. I won't name them obviously on this stream, but there are the loads out there that you can go and play. But if you want a, a virtual transport simulator, this there is no better than than Transport Fever. No, I agree with that. I mean, it's you know you you have the option to turn you know the the economy on or off, and I mean you and I both play it with it on. I like to be kept honest and not run just completely implausible stuff. But for other people, that's less important. And, uh, and it's more about just building whatever the heck they like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I personally like to, uh, to have sandbox mode on. And the, right. reason, the reason I like to have sandbox mode on, let me jump out of this train for a second, is because the, the aesthetics are really, really important to me. Uh, and yep. in, in my second segment, I will be doing some of the aesthetics to show off the, like, the paint tools and the terrain tools to show you just what you can do with these maps. It is, no, it's really good. It is genuinely incredible. Um, but it does mean that like, if I've got something that's in the way, like one of these industries, and it's spoiling one of my views or something, I want to be able to move it. You know, and yeah. and and you can do that. And and like, if I've got a town that's not quite in the right place, like, like let let's say I wanted St. Louis to be growing out on this peninsula, right? Then if I've got sandbox mode on, and 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 this is the uh, this is what I love is the flexibility of the game. You can play it how you want to play it. If you don't want to be able to do this stuff, if you want to stick to the, the pure challenge of shipping stuff around exactly as it is randomly generated, you can do that. But if you want to move a town around, then now you can just go in. I can delete the whole of St. Louis, right? And then just put in another town, like right in the middle of a game. Yep. If you want to do that, you can do it. So it's not just that map generation that you can manipulate everything. You can manipulate everything right in the middle of a game if you want to. And I love that. I love it. Yep. Nope. It's top. And also, if you find that you've you've got a map that is absolutely unworkable because of the way that the industries are laid out, well, just stick in a cheeky industry and uh, and get it done. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, no, there is no win or lose uh, other than, uh, you know, have you had fun doing it? If you had fun, you won. Congratulations. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, for me, I, I I see this primarily as a virtual train set. And let's face it, like if you're building a model railway, there is no win or lose other than do you sit there at the end of the day looking at it and going, wow, right? And I tell you what, with Transport Fever, you do. Yep. Yep. And that's the win for me. No, completely agree. All right, um, Colonel Favour, it is one o'clock and it's time for me to hand off to you. Oh, you I don't want thing. to. I want to stay. I want to play but more. We've, we've got loads more to do. So uh, so you're, you're going to be sated by the end of the day, I don't doubt. I, I'm not. I'm not. We're only, we're only on here till nine o'clock tonight. Well, we'll go a bit longer, maybe. We'll see how <laughs> it turns out. We might. You never know. Yeah. I'm very tempted. All right, but Colonel. No, no one told us we had to stop. That's true, actually. We could go longer. We'll see if there's anybody still here. When yeah. we get to like nine o'clock at night, we'll see if anybody wants this to carry on. Quite. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off now. So can I um, can I thank you all for being here, for 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 watching, for for chiming in. Please give the Colonel a hard time while I'm away. I certainly will. It is. And um, I'll be back. I'll be back in two hours. Uh, thanks, Colonel. Peace out.